following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Hello and welcome to uh, the uh, the November 11th, the Magical Monday. In fact, it is the uh, Veterans Day edition of today's Traders Ed Show. Uh, great to be with you. Hope everybody out there is having a, a great day. Look, we're recording this show uh, between 8 and 9 this morning. If you happen to be listening in live, we'd love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in and you're still listening, again, between 8 and 9 this morning, uh, feel free to send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, just put a radio show question for any instrument, anything that you'd like me to take a look at. And, of course, inside our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So it is Veterans Day. We honor uh, those who are or have served in any of the uh, military uh, branches, any of the armed services out there. So thank you for your service. I promise to be as much service to you as I can during this next hour. So definitely would love to hear from you. So let's go ahead and get this show started on uh, Magical Monday, again, November the 11th. It's now 8.07 in the morning. Of course, this is time. Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Currently, we've got the uh, equity futures all trading uh, lower. You've got the Dow down about 113 points. The S&P's off 11. NASDAQ's off 33. Russell down 7 points. So all about four-tenths of a percent to the uh, downside. Spot volatility index has spiked up. It's up about 10 percent, $1.20 right now. So you want to watch that 10 percent level uh, coming into today's close. If you see the spot volatility index with a one-day rate of change, greater than 10 percent the odds favor you see some type of bouncer bottom pattern in the overnight uh, trading session nothing to worry about at 808 in the morning and at 108 in the afternoon it's all going to be about the close and where that spot volatility index is trading. If we take a look at overseas markets, you had uh, China and uh, Japan close lower. They were off by well you had the Shanghai traded down 1.8 percent the Hang Seng off 2.6 percent and the Nikkei down about a quarter percent or 60 points out there. Uh, the Australian markets closed higher by three quarters of a percent, 48 points. It closed out at 67.72. That's the S&P Asia, uh, uh, Australia 200. The DAX and the uh, FTSE right now are trading lower. The FTSE is off uh, a little over 1 percent. The DAX down about four tenths of a percent. You've got gold that is basically flat out there, down 20 cents, so no big deal. Silver's off four pennies, about a quarter of a percent. Light sweet crude down 1 percent right now. She's trading down to 56.67 and natural gas big huge gap to the downside uh, as trading opened uh, creating a, a third bearish pattern uh, for it so we'll take a look at that the third bearish pattern being a uh, island top pattern with the uh, gap to the downside you've got uh, now the treasury bond uh, pit is closed today uh, you've got electronic electronic trading going on so how reliable is it with such a thin market probably not that reliable there is some movement inside the uh, currency uh, market uh, primarily being the british pound so we'll take a look at it we'll take a look at the u.s dollar index which is trading down 20 ticks right now trading out at 97.95. I do have a 10-minute delay there, so it's not trading exactly at that as we speak at 8.09 in the morning. So where do we want to begin? Uh, we don't have any questions that are in just yet. So where do we want to begin? Let's trade. I, th I think we should begin with the equity futures markets out here. So in overnight action, an overnight action. What we have here, what you're, if you're watching us on Tiger TV or inside the den, hopefully you are, you can see my charts out here. And uh, what we can see is that both the ES Mini and the Dow equity futures contract, that's ES, that's the left-hand panel, and the one that is third from my left or second from the right, that's the Dow equity futures contract. And this is a daily time frame. 
Uh, we're just looking at uh, bars out here. But what I want you to, uh, not that we need to go to the bar or anything, but not at 8 o'clock in the morning at least, but what I want you to be focused on is that the ES Mini and the Dow are both trying to form a brand new daily market profile. Now, I'm using Stevie's advanced Doppler indicator out here, and it's always possible that these profiles will not form. But we do have advanced information, so we'll use that advanced information. And what this tells us is that the ES Mini uh, may just simply pull back and test support the bottom of its profile out there, which would be 3058. We're trading at 3079 right now, so it's another 21 points to the downside. I'm not making the prognostication that that's where price is headed to right now today, but that is a level to be watching. It's especially a level to be watching as we come back uh, tomorrow and we revisit this tomorrow to see if these profiles actually hold or not. There's a possibility that it won't. But again, you and I are going to use the information that we have available to us to make our trading decisions. Now, it would be a close below the bottom of that profile, 3058, should it form, that would then signal to you and I that there would be a change in trend. Now, you may say if there's a change in trend, Steve-O, where would price head back to? So if we take a look at my other charts out here, or my other chart, I should say, for the daily time frame, here you're going to take a look at an A to B equals CD pattern. You're going to take a look at two of them, actually. Actually, the one that comes off of the low back in uh, the August time frame, that's the one with the black diagonals on my screen. And what you can see or should see here is that the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD would take you to the 3105 level. Now, price has not gotten up to exactly 3105. We use that as a guideline. So far, the high in the Yes Mini took place on November 7th, and that high was 3097. 3097 versus 3105. That's close enough for me. Uh, hopefully, it's close enough for you. Now, when I say close enough, it's uh, it's only close enough to attaining that price level out there, but that doesn't mean that it's a sell. Now, and take a look at the chart. You'll see 2A to B equals CD. I'm going to go ahead. You'll see a smaller one, the red one out there. That's just a pattern coming off a low from October 3rd and then the retracement low from October 10th. And then you'll see a 1 to 2 A to B equals CD. Now, I'm going to get rid of that one out there just to get rid of some of the noise that's on my screen. So now you'll see the larger one that's in play out here. And more important, what you will see is you will see Stevie's green line. And that level is 3072. So we took a look at 3058. That was the bottom of the daily profile. We also have Stevie's green line or the oscillator and change line. Price must close below Stevie's green line um, before it gives you even the earliest hint on a daily basis of a change in trend. So you'll want to watch 3072. Again, I don't know where price will be trading at 113 in the afternoon. At 113 in the afternoon, I'm sitting in a dentist chair, just so you know what I'm doing with my afternoon out there. And you know how much I love the dentist. Actually, I do because, you know, hey, having our teeth is a good thing out there. In any event, that's why I'm recording the show here at 8 o'clock in the uh, morning. So if we take a look at this chart here, we also can see that today may be a bear, may generate a bearish engulfing candle. I don't know if it will or it won't. 8.14 in the morning is too close to call, too early to call, because we really have to wait for the uh, candle session close. But should we see a close below the open on Friday in the ES Mini? So let me give you that figure. The figure you're looking at is 3086.25. And if there's a close below 3086.25 today, uh, you're going to receive or it's going to generate generate a bearish engulfing candle. Now, that bearish engulfing candle will then confirm the A to B equals CD pattern, or as I like to refer to as the sell the D point of the A to B equals CD. And it's just a coincidence, I suppose, that uh, using our Chapman wave counts out here, that the ES Mini is in wave number four or letter D. That's not the sell the D point I'm referring to. But uh, nonetheless, the key level today, in summary, 3072. The change in trend signal, 3058. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're coming to you live. It's 818 in the uh, morning. If you're listening at the normal time, thanks so much for doing that. We're going to make this show as pertinent for you as we possibly can at this hour. So some of you, if you listen to the opening segment out there, we were really focused on the uh, the S&P futures contract, taking a look at the daily equity futures, and have noted that the ES Mini and the YM are both trying to form new daily profiles. Now, in the case of the NQ, it has already formed its market profile. It did that uh, four trading sessions ago, and uh, price is uh, just an inside bar uh, with regard to uh, yes, uh, Friday's action out there. And uh, so someone might have said, hey, Steve-O, you know, you've got the S&P futures right now down 12 and a quarter points out there, the Dow up 125. Why can't you make a change in trend call right now? Well, and that's a great question, and, and here would be my answer to anyone who would have asked that question. What I need to see, and I think what you also need to see, you need to see key levels of support being broken. So what are key levels of support out there? As you know, we just talked about that in the first segment. We use our TAS market profiles. Those help us to identify support and resistance where buyers and sellers are. The other levels that we can take a look at, and this chart here that we have on our screen is showing three time frames. Uh, the top time frame is 30 minutes. Below that, or in the center, is 60 minutes and then below that is the 120 minute time frame so because i'm showing three different time frames the spacing of the bars on the bottom panel is much wider than it is on obviously the upper panel because it's uh it's it, it, in any event i think you can kind of figure that out but here's the deal that really wasn't so important don't even know why i said that but i did and the key is though support 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 and breakout support 
And that's really what the key is. And you're taking a look at those red horizontal lines. If there's going to be a change in trend, what we should see is we should see breakout support begin to fail on the shorter term time frames, at least first, right? If there's going to be a change in trend signal, we should see it inside the shorter term time frames first. Well, we don't have that inside the ES Mini. You'll see a conglomeration. Can I call it a conglomeration? You'll see an area of congestion. That's probably better. And that area of congestion, you've got a breakout level of 3068.50, another one at 3069.50, only one point, and then another one that is just two points above that at 3071.50. Those are the areas on a 30-minute time frame basis where the ES Mini must close below to generate a change in trend signal. From a 60-minute standpoint, I need to scrunch. That is a technical term out here. Uh, for the 60-minute time frame, it's at 3068.75. There's our 3068 area. And on the 120-minute, it gets all the way down to 3037. So uh, those levels... And at 121 in the afternoon should tell you a whole lot about what the uh, what the what the uh, intention of the S and P futures contract is. If price got down to those areas, the 3068 area, and it holds, there, there's no change in trend, and it's going to be a a confusing signal because I gave you a level that the ES mini needs to close below which is above where it's trading right now, uh, for it to generate a bearish engulfing candle, which, as I said, would confirm the sell the D point pattern. But when you get a topping pattern, when you get a topping pattern, really the first role and the first step, our first step is to say, okay, is this just a retracement back to support? And then we say, well, where is support? And so for you and I, it's easy. We're going to use Stevie's red or green line, the oscillator and change line. Again, 3072 on the daily time frame chart for the ES Mini. And we're going to use those TD set of breakout areas. By the way, in the ES Mini, if price were to close below the bottom of that daily profile, then our target would become its breakout, meaning the daily target, which is 29.9875. There would be nothing wrong with price pulling. That would be your buy the dip area on the ES Mini. Or what I really should say, that could be your buy the dip area. We would really need to see what else is going on at that stage and what's going on inside the other equity futures contracts to be able to put all this together. So in summary, yeah, futures are trading lower. And is this a significant top? That I don't know. But what we do know is if it is a significant top out there, price must start busting through key levels of support. And in the case of the ES Mini, that just simply is not the case out there. So the other one that has formed the other equity futures contract that has formed a new market profile is the Dow equity futures contract. The bottom of that profile is 27203. 27203. Remember that number. Now, if we take a look at the daily time frame chart, and this says of 8:23 in the afternoon, this too, meaning the Dow equity futures contract, may be forming a three river evening star pattern. That's a bearish reversal candle that would confirm it's smaller. A to B equals CD to the pattern, not the larger one. The larger one that, again, starts back in August, that would be the black diagonal lines that you see on my screen out here, which has a one-to-one -one price projection of 28,003. Really, price did not get close enough to that area to say that that larger A to B equals CD pattern has completed. It's just too far away to make that call. But there is the smaller one, the smaller A to B equals CD pattern that comes off of the October lows. Uh, that was the October third low and then there was a uh, move higher for a couple days and retracement into a low on October 10th uh, it was about a 69 percent uh, so we'll call that close enough to uh, 0.618 retracement out there and now you can see that price did get to the one to two level and if today's bar closes I'm going to I'll eyeball this around below 27,550. We'll call it 27,550, 553 right around there. That will, it's got to be halfway into the bar from November 7th in order to be able to get that three river evening star. But regardless of that, even if you do get it, price still must close below 27,399 to generate that change in trend signal. That's the daily oscillator on change line, Stevie's green line out there. So those are the numbers to be watching uh, this morning. If we do take a look at the Dow equity futures contracts, short term time frames. Let's pull those over here and the levels that price must close below. So you've seen a close below inside the Dow. You've seen a close below two of its 
30-minute breakout areas. The third one out here is at 27,404. And then you get to the 60-minute time frame, and I think I'd probably defer to the 60-minute time frame at this stage here to generate a change in trending signal, about 27,306. Not about. It is at 27,306 out there. So that's what we're looking at when we take a look at the Dow equity futures contract. You got 27,306, but Stevie's red line was green at 27,398 would be the first one to be focused on and paying attention to. Now, the Russell 2000 has not generated a new market profile. Uh, I don't have one on my advanced Doppler system out here. So in the case of the Russell 2000, we just simply have to take a look at its equity futures contract and patterns that are out there. And when we take a look at it, you're going to notice two, two patterns. One you're going to see, or two potential patterns, one, one that's a confirmed pattern. You see that the Russell 2000's high so far on this move, now not this all-time high, but the high during this move coming off the uh, October bottom, uh, topped with wave, uh, not with, with, uh, with uh, bar count number nine of the TD setup nine count pattern. So that's its high, valid topping pattern. There's also the A to B equals CD. Uh, that was the one-to-one -one price projection. Takes us to or took us to about 1616. Price got close enough on day number nine or bar number nine of that TD setup nine count. And now the key is price is pulling back and testing Stevie's green line. It's the Russell 2000. And I believe that green line number is about 1589. The Russell 2000 is probably the one to signal to us whether there will be some kind of change in trend or not. Watch 1589 on the RTY. Here Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to the opening call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So our first question coming in from uh, Alex. Alex writes in and he says, uh, hey, Steve, hey, Alex, is the drop in natural gas getting close to a bottom? So let's go take a look and try to answer this question here for Alex. So we're like, we're taking a look at the uh, December natural gas contract. We're specifically taking a look at the December natural gas contract because that is what makes up the entire ETF right now for UNG. So for those of you that trade those vehicles, whether it's UNG, G or I think it's U-G-A-S, Z, U-G-A-S, Z out there, or whichever one it is. Um, uh, here's what we know, Alex. So I think I'd mentioned during the opening that there was this island top, in essence, that has uh, formed inside the December contract for natural gas. And you can see what a, what a, what a island top, it doesn't have to occur at all-time highs. When it does, that's always very bearish out here. But here, what we saw in natural gas was back on November 4th out there. So it was, in essence, last Monday, there was a gap to the upside. And we saw price uh, move higher the following day and just trade. There was a new profile that had formed. It was bullish in structure. Price had tested the bottom of that level on November 7th, as well as November 8th. And then price opens for trading last night. And we have a gap to the downside. So there is that island top. In other words, all these folks out here are stranded, wondering whether the ship or price is going to come back. And Alex asking the question, is there any kind of bottom? Well, Alex, what we also know is that price right now is trading below the top of the weekly profile. So old resistance that could have become new support out there. It's not. Um, so uh, then that level is 2.682 out there. And so... Uh, from a daily perspective, any close below 2.682 suggests to me that price is going to pull back further. Now, as we pull over our other chart out here, uh, our other daily time frame chart, we're going to see we're going to see the A to B equals CD pattern. So, forget about the potential bearish island top that's out there. We can see that what natural gas, the December contract did, was it formed a one to one A to B equals CD pattern. That was in the 286 level. We had a dark cloud cover candle form um, on the trading day of November 6. That confirmed the sell the D point. Uh, the nine count top, we just took a look at the nine count top inside the uh, daily chart for the Russell 2000 out here. Um, and so what we what we have is a TD nine count top as well inside the December contract for natural gas. So now two topping patterns and we can really say three out there, Alex, with the island top and prices trading below Steve V's green line. So what the daily time frame chart suggests to you and I, Alex, is that price is likely pulling back to where it broke out two dollars and 41 cents. Now, maybe price doesn't pull all the way back there. Uh, maybe we're 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 wrong on that call, so to speak. Um, but if we are, and it has bottomed, Eric, uh, Eric, Alex, the same the same techniques are what we can apply here. Well, the techniques that you and I looked at for the ES mini and the YM, and I think maybe even the NQ out there, which was looking at the in this case here, you're asking for. Is this bottoming? If it were to bottom, we would see resistance levels or breakdown areas, the TD9 breakdown areas in the short term time frames begin to fail. And at this stage, we don't have that. The first level that would need to fail would be $2.07, 270, 2.706 on the December contract. A close above that would say, well, okay, maybe there's something to think about. But right now, that would be the that would be the level I would be watching. Um, we don't have I don't have any bottoming signals per se out here. If, uh, this is one of my new tools that I'm developing for. Uh, for subscribers and if we, to help us assist us and understand what the markets are doing, but also to make it easy to uh, find uh, instruments that are potentially forming tops or bottoms out there. So to do the scan, I use four or five patterns to identify tops and bottoms. Remember, not 
every time will a top or bottom will one of these patterns be present. But when they are present, well, then they're really great tools to help us identify those tops and bottoms out here. Here are the TD9 counts, and these are for various futures contracts out there. You'll see the equity futures, metal futures. You'll see oil and gas, bonds, commodities, various commodities out there. And here what you've got is multiple time frames. So I've just got the 30-minute uh, support levels out here. Um, but I've got the 30-minute, 60-minute, two-hour, four-hour, five-hour daily and weekly accounts out there. TD set up nine counts, and it's the it's the boxes that are highlighted in yellow or green that are the ones that uh, we would pay most attention to, specifically for those time frames out there to help us identify some type of top or bottom. When we take a look at natural gas out here, uh, and we take a look at its potential bottoming signals, nothing yet arrives. Nothing yet has shown up. Now, it's possible on the two-hour time frame chart, it's right now in bar number seven to the downside. It would be bar number eight, nine to the bar following nine. So a two-hour chart here, um, or the two hundred, it's, it's the four-hour chart. It's the four-hour chart that we're taking a look at. I'm not sure what time that closes out here, but it, it could be not till the end of the day before we would get even any type of signal uh, there. Wait, let me make sure I'm looking at natural gas. No, I, 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 I take that back. I was looking at the wrong symbol altogether. No, it was the two-hour time frame chart. <clears throat> so it was a two-hour time frame chart where we've got that uh, minus seven count out there. So it would be, you know, maybe four hours away at best case scenario out there. So, Alex, the, the answer to your question is it looks like we've got a deeper pullback going on. And if we don't, we'll see those short-term resistance levels that we looked at. Um, from the 30-minute uh, time frame, those will begin to uh, fail, and that'll tell us that, okay, the retracement is over. But as I see it right now, it looks like natural gas wants lower price, and that buy area uh, should come at around the $2.41 level. That's what we would be looking for, in lieu of some other pattern that might form to the uh, downside. So thanks for writing in so early, and hope that that uh, helps you out. And folks, I want to hear from you, too. If you're listening in uh, at this early hour, it's 8.36. We're trying to make this show as much as we can relative, uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, pertinent to uh, today's trading session, if you're listening at uh, 137 in the afternoon. So we do have another question here, kind of from Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, uh, he's up nice and early. Uh, da, 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 da. Could you please do a side-by-side -side comparison of GPOR, which we previously looked at with CPE? So let's go take a look at uh, first uh, GPOR. And let me get to the uh, three different uh, time frames out here. One of the other tools or one of the other ways that we'll look at what this instrument is doing, which is Gulfport Energy, is take a look at its uh, profile levels out here. So we'll begin by taking a look at the uh, daily, weekly, and the monthly set of profiles. And, and Brent here, price is above the daily box, 308, above the weekly box, 320. And uh, all that seems to bode well to suggest to you and I that price is targeting the top of its monthly profile. That's 409. Boy, a close above 409 from a profile perspective would suggest that this wants higher price out there. But what we're going to do is we're about to go to a hard breakout here. Uh, price uh, may pull back may pull back out here inside of GPOR. If it does continue to pull back, the buy point would be about $3.24. That is Stevie's green line out there. But we come back from this break, we'll further look at Gulfport Energy for Brent in Martinez, California, who's up very early, 5.38 in the morning. I love it. The early bird catches the big worm. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at that. Uh, we're beginning to take a look at Gulfport uh, Energy GPOR is a ticker symbol out here. Uh, and the question from Brent is, which of the two, where the next one we're going to look at is, is CPE, which of the two maybe looks better from a, a trading standpoint? He is not in either. And again, we were looking at the daily time frame chart as we were going to break out here. And uh, this did bottom with a TD setup nine count pattern. So there's really two bottoms out here. There's the Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, Brent, that took place the daily time frame on September the 4th. Uh, that was confirmed on the following day when we had that Three River Morningstar pattern out there. That was a bullish reversal signal confirming that Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Price goes ahead and trades higher for about the next couple of weeks. Then it goes ahead and it pulls back. And when it pulls back, it was testing that prior swing point from September 4th. I don't know if it was with volume, light volume or not, but it also formed a TD set of nine count patterns. So there's two of the four patterns that we use to identify tops and bottoms. So a higher low. Price then, and the, the, the nice thing about what Gulfport Energy did here um, was it uh, gapped up above its resistance level of 326. That was that TD setup nine count resistance level out there. And so that's a positive out here. Uh, the buy point on this would be a test of Stevie's uh, green line that is uh, 325 uh, as we speak right now. I don't have any real bottoming signals or anything on the weekly or the monthly out there. So uh, I would then say falling back to the monthly, knowing that you've got resistance at 409, not formula 409, but 409, the price point out there. If price were to close above that, uh, Gulfport Energy uh, looks uh, pretty uh, looks pretty good. That's how I, that's because uh, that would be a we haven't seen a close above the top of a, a monthly profile uh, since uh, going back to uh, July of this year, July, I take that back, July of last year, 2018, out here. So that would be a nice signal. So watch that for Formula 409 area. So that's that's Gulfport. Uh, the next question was, uh, which one looks better, CPE? So CPE is uh, 
Kellon, Kellogg Petroleum Company. Now, this uh, closed above the top of its uh, daily profile last week, which was 421. Uh, still has some work to do to get up to its weekly, which is five bucks even, Stephen. And uh, it's below the monthly profile. So, from a profile standpoint, um, Gulfport Energy looks better. It, that one's real simple call. So you got resistance here, five bucks and then six thirty-two. The daily time frame chart for Calon Petroleum out here. Uh, this did form a road momentum bottom signal uh, back on September. The confirmation came on September 6th with the bull sash. Rises higher, pulls back. Didn't generate the TD setup nine count pattern. There was a nine count pattern, but the low did not occur on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. So at this stage, and price here, what you can see is it ran into resistance of its breakdown area, which was 466. So in order for this one to have a similar outlook, uh, you need to see a close above. The close was 454. Forget my candle hasn't updated yet for some reason, but 466 is the uh, number. You need to see this get above to at least tell you that there is the potential of a change in trend here. So on the daily charts, uh, we've got to say winner, winner, chicken dinner goes to Gulfport Energy. Uh, but just uh, for the heck of it, Callan Petroleum, let me look at the weekly real quickly out here. So the weekly does have a nice, so whereas, so this is this is interesting, uh, the weekly here has both the TD setup nine count bottom as well as Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. So you got two bottom signals. And if price can get above that 466 level, then 584 would likely become the price target. That's where it broke down on a weekly basis. But you do like, or I do like, the weekly um, signal that formed. And from a monthly standpoint for Cal and Petroleum, no, nothing, nothing yet. So you're asking me which one, which chart looks the best? Well, the daily chart, if you're going to focus on the dailies, we give that uh, to uh, Gulfport Energy. If you want to use the weekly, well, then we give that to Kellon Petroleum, but it must close above five bucks to signal to us that there is a change in trend, that $5 is the top of its uh, weekly profile. Brent, I hope that helps you out. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for being with us so early in the uh, morning. Let's see if we've got any other questions that have come in. I don't see anything else. Of course, you guys can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com, inside the subject heading put uh, radio show question. Of course, if you're listening and it's 1.47 in the afternoon, don't do that, only because I'm taping this show live. We'll be back to normal programming hours tomorrow morning and... Uh, uh, or tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, I should say, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. But you know, it's morning. Get cut, cut me a little bit of slack out there. Okay. So, no other questions that are in here, but I think we've thoroughly taken a look at the equity futures. Oh, I did uh, mention earlier in the show, and so I should just really cover this. That watch the spot volatility index. It's right now is trading higher by 10.44%. When I say higher, I mean a one-day rate of change higher. So the close of the close of Friday versus where it's trading right now in the pre-market, a 10. Uh, um, in 1044, well, hold on a minute here. Yeah, 10, 10, 10, 10 10.44 is the one day rate of change at this stage here. Now, if this were to be a one day rate of change greater than 10%, what you would focus in on, on these charts here are all the blue arrows. The blue arrows represent those one day rates of change greater than that 10%. And you will see a majority of the time, not all of the time, but a majority of the time, what you see take place on the next trading session. This is the S&P Cash. I really should do this for the ES Mini, and you would see it even more pronounced out there. Um, you see some type of bounce or bottom uh, take place. Now, we're up at a we're up at the all-time high area. Um, the last time we were up at the all-time high and we received that type of a signal was actually at the at at an all-time high, which was on May 1st, 2019. But even that following day, it was a stalling. It was a flattish type market interest session. There was a try and attempt to push a bit higher out there. So uh, just to, just just be careful. Just watch for that come days in. I don't know where the spot volatility is trading at 1:49 in the afternoon, but it's really important as to what the rate of change is at 4 p.m. Even Steven out there. Okay, so we've covered that. Let's go take a look at uh, Goldilocks, see what gold is doing out here. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, we know that gold formed uh, three 
roads went to indicator topping patterns out there. Uh, it has since it's going on to what looks like an A to B equals CD to the downside. The one to one price projection takes you to 1424. Uh, oftentimes, gold will do more than a one to one. I won't say that at this stage because of the sideways consolidation that we have seen out here. But more likely than not, the price target, the downside price target, the initial price target, the price target at this stage, can I qualify it anymore? Uh, will take us into the 1412 to 1424 area. Um, and that's what we'll be watching for. And as price gets into that area, we'll be looking to see what its TD9 count counter is at. Today looks like it may be bar number five. So as you know, we like to look at bars number eight, nine, or 10 out there. Uh, we'll also want to see some type of, should price continue to pull back, we'll also want to see uh, some type of bullish reversal candle because price would be getting down towards that one to one A to B equals CD or may get there. And a, a bullish reversal candle in that case could confirm a Gartley buy pattern. But right now, as we speak, 8.50 in the morning, gold continues to want lower price. Be careful out there in Goldilocks land. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. So that definitely is not the uh, case out there. Uh, the uh, next hour, no matter what time it is you're listening uh, to us, 
Uh, the uh, the next hour, if you're listening in at 854, it's going to be Larry Pesavento. And then if you're listening in at the uh, 1 o'clock hour, it's 154. David White will be up next. David, uh, I just want to say thank you. I just checked my emails. And uh, David sent me a list of what looks like 35 different uh, either butterfly or Gartley patterns that um, have formed or are forming uh, inside the market. You know, the very first software package that I ever purchased when I uh, began getting into technical analysis was uh, David's uh, software, uh, David and Tom, the art of uh, timing the uh, or timing the trade out there. And a great piece of software, a great, great, great place for someone to begin their technical analysis. So if you're looking for a software package out there, um, and especially this one because it does such a great job of helping to identify those Gartley buy and sell patterns, and that's what we were talking about inside gold. It's not there yet. It's something to be on the lookout for. Uh, this is really a great uh, tool uh, to do that. We're in the two-minute wrap out here. Here's what I would be watching during the day. And right now you've got the Dow equity futures off about 107. S&P down 12 and a half, NASDAQ off 39, Russell is down nine points out there. But here, in essence, is what we're looking at. And here's some of those roads, momentum indicator top. So, Maria, if we take a look at the S&P 500, I think the five-hour time frame chart is a really good time frame to let you know, let all of us know what's going on. You can see that roads, momentum indicator top. And then we can see that what price has really done, we saw TD nine count top that pushed price down to test support. Support here was the bottom of that bullish structured five-hour time frame profile. And so it's 30.69. And what we'd really need to see is a close below 30.69 to suggest some type of change in trend is underway. Price is trading between support and resistance. Resistance is Stevie's green line. That's as clear as we can see out there. And that's at the 30.90 level. So folks, thanks so much for being here early with me. Stay tuned. Larry Pesavento is up next or David White, depending on the time frame. I'll be back tomorrow at the uh, normal 1 p.m. time frame. So have a hey, have a, uh, a happy Veterans Day, and thank you to all of you who are or have served in our military. We honor you. Have a great Monday.